In his review of the 1997 Kurosami film Taste of Cherry, critic Roger Ebert calls it an emperor without any clothes. A case can be made for the movie, but it would involve transforming the experience of viewing the film, which is excruciatingly boring, into something more interesting, a fable about life and death. Just as a bad novel can be made into a good movie, so can a boring movie be made into a fascinating movie review. Taste of Cherry certainly divides audiences. Some people are die-hard fans of the film, while others hate it as strongly. Some regard it as a profound piece of work, a meditation on the purpose of life, while others just find it tedious. A film as spiritless as its protagonist and as dry as its landscape. Even though the film is just 100 minutes long, the progression of the story, the pacing is extremely slow, which admittedly did make me feel restless at times. But then this is Kurosami's style. He likes to deliberate upon frames, seemingly unimportant in consequential ones, and remarkably manages to find poetry in the most mundane and subtlest events. اما فکر کنم یه فیلم فیلم خوبی است که فیلم خوب فیلمی که باید با دوام باشه و باید درست وقتی که از سینما میای بیرون از اون موقع شروع کنم به ساخته شدن خیلی از فیلم ها هست به نظر من که فیلم های کسالت باری هم علا ظاهر وقتی داره میبینی ولی فیلم های خیلی بدی نیستن اما فیلم ساز ها با با تماشا چشون رو گروگان میگیرن و احساساتیشون میکنن مطلقا دوست نداره Mr. Badi is not a fleshed out well rounded character The film doesn't reveal the motivations of the protagonist where does he come from what's his background what exactly is weighing him down why does he want to kill himself usually we associate a good film with well written well rounded characters on this parameter the film certainly fails however critic jonathan rosenbaum who hails taste of cherry as a masterpiece has an interesting argument on the reticence of the protagonist If Kurosami had wanted us to empathize only with Badi's suicidal impulses, he might have told us more about the man. But this would have interfered with his desire to have us empathize as well with Badi's three passengers who know as little about the stranger as we do. The film is concerned with their dilemma as well as his. Now I have a slightly different take on this. I feel Kurosami keeps our protagonist low key so that every demoralized broken person with a similar state of mind to Mr Buddy's can relate to him with this choice the majority of the audience gets alienated since they find it difficult to put themselves into the shoes of the protagonist one without any prominent back story not everyone has gone through depression and fought suicidal thoughts to be able to understand and connect with Mr Buddy این در واقع همه اینها با هم هم سازنده با بازیگر هم بازیگر با تماشاگر یک فصل مشترک دارن و این فصل مشترک نشون میده که اگر این ناهنجاره پس تمامی اونایی که دارن فیلمو نگاه میکنن ناهنجار چون اونا از کجا میدونن اگر ناهنجاری در درون خودشون نبود اساسا پی نمی بردن به ناهنجاری دیگران The last section of the film is certainly baffling After skipping Mr Buddy's fate we see camcorder footage of the film crew filming taste of cherry some claim that the ending emotionally deflates the whole story as ebert calls it a tiresome distancing strategy to remind us we are seeing a movie rosenbaum throws a counter argument it's the precise opposite of a distancing effect it does invite us into the laboratory from which the film sprang and places us on an equal footing with the filmmaker yet it does this in a spirit of collective euphoria suddenly liberating us from the oppressive solitude and darkness of buddy alone in his grave shifting to the soldiers reminds us of the happiest part of buddy's life and a tree in full bloom reminds us of the turkish taxidermist's epiphany though the soldiers also signify the wars that made the kurdish soldier and the afghan seminarian refugees and a tree is where the turk almost hung himself kurostami is representing life in all its rich complexity as i see it the coda of the film is pointing towards a hopeful conclusion for mr buddy if not for this section our leading man's fate would be completely ambiguous would he commit suicide 
over the old man's pep talk we with magic mr bali certainly starts to get a seed of doubt in his mind as we see him running back to the old man to request a thorough check before initiating the burial to make sure he's really dead and not just fast asleep later mr bali stops to fleetingly observe the beauty of his surroundings the relatively joyful end the director and crew members celebrating the process of filmmaking as jazz legend louis armstrong glides with his trumpet in the background hints at the possibility that mr buddy has abandoned the idea of killing himself بعد ساعت یه فیلمی که تماشاچی شو تو توی سالن سینما میخوابونه گاهی ترجیح میدم فکر کنم اون فیلم‌ها فیلم‌های مهربونی ان لاغا که بهت فرصت میده که چرتی هم بزنی اما آزارت نمیده وقتی میای بیرون من فیلمایی بودی که میام واقعا توی سینما یه چرت زدم ولی شب خواب اثرم پرونده و بعد فردا صبح باش فکرش بیدار شدم و هفته ها و هفته ها با زندگی کردم من این نوع فیلم‌ها رو بیشتر دوست دارم